فاشرف بي لاشتغالي بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Again, I lost my voice. Um, so bear with me, inshallah ta'ala. It's from the norms that we lose our voice when we give classes. Yesterday we spoke about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He placed inside the men. He placed inside the men. Mailur Rajuli, the man has desires for the woman and the woman has desires for the man. Today we're going to be speaking about Al Hikmatu Al Hikmatu the wisdom Min Lups al Hijab the wisdom in why a woman should wear a hijab. What's the wisdom? My beloved brothers and sisters, what we have to know is Everything Allah commands, there's a wisdom behind it. Sometimes we know the wisdom and sometimes we don't. And just because we don't know the wisdom, that doesn't mean there is, there is no wisdom. Every action of Allah has a wisdom. If you do something today and there's no wisdom behind it, people will consider you what? An insane person. They will consider you an insane person. If you, Abbas, if you randomly walk and you hit your head against the wall, everybody's going to say to you, what are you doing? Why would you hit your head against the wall, Abbas? So, that's what distinguishes between the one that's sane and the one that's in, insane. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his actions and his legislations, they have wisdom behind it. Sometimes those wisdom are told to us, we know. Sometimes the scholars may even find out by researching. And sometimes the wisdom is unknown. But that doesn't mean there's no wisdom. As we took before, women are a fitna for men. And the patience that a man has to endure or he has to come with in the affairs of the women is very hard. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who created like created them like that. So to reduce the um, fitna, to reduce the fitna, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he sanctioned hijab. That the woman when she comes out, because she's a fitna, for her to cover up from the men. So, she first of all, so she doesn't also get harmed as well to protect her. Also, to protect the men from falling into trials and tribulation. Also, not to throw the men into what? Into fitna. So, it is to protect both sides. It is to protect the woman so she doesn't get harmed. And it is also to protect the men so that they don't also fall into that which is prohibited. And then it angers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If the woman leaves her house, shaitan will put every effort there is to beautify her. Even if that woman does not look good. Even if she's not appealing. Shaytan will put all his efforts in making her look better than what she is. And this is something he will do. وَلِذَلِكَ The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said in the hadith Imam Muslim narrated in his Sahih من حديث جابر أن رسول الله that the Prophet of Allah رأى امرأة he saw a woman. The Prophet saw a woman 
and فأتى امرأته when the Prophet saw this, this woman he came and he went to his he went to his wife زينبا the Prophet came home to his wife زينبا وهي تمعس منيتا and his wife was tanning leather his wife she was tanning leather Zainab and the Prophet he fulfilled his desires from her then the Prophet came out to his companions فقال, he said to them verily the woman she will come forward in the form of a shaitan and the woman will walk away and turn away in the form of a shaitan if one of you sees a woman let him fulfill his desires with his family for verily that will eradicate the desires that are in him now some of you may ask yourselves what does the prophet mean by the woman will face you and she will come forward to you in the form of shaitan and she will walk away in the form of shaitan what it means is what the scholars mentioned al imam al munawi al imam abdul rauf al munawi in his kitab faid al qadir he said rahimahullah anna ru'yataha tuthiru al shahwata wa tuqim al himma the woman she will um, she will increase in the level of desire and she will place inside the man a drive fal murad annaha tushbihu al shaytan fi du'a'ihi lil shar she comes in the form of a shaytan means she calls to evil just like the shaytan calls to evil by her coming out adorning herself dressing herself up she's calling the man to what evil just like the shaytan will call the man to what evil qala tibi tibi said ja'ala surat ash-shaytan darafan li iqbalha mubalaghatan ala sabil at-tajrid li anna iqbalha da'i lil insan ila istirqa'i istirqa istiraq istiraq an-nazar ilayha kash-shaytan da'i lil sharr wa tudbiru fi surat ash-shaytan li anna taraf ra'id al-qalb يتعلق بها عند عند الادبار ايضا بتامل الخضر والردف وما هنالك the woman when she comes forward she walks forward she attracts the men she calls them to evil by her image when she's walking towards the men and when she's walking away her image is also what's going to call the men to evil so she is being compared to the shaytan from that angle but if you see the woman who's wearing the hijab the woman who's wearing the hijab she has disconnected that path the woman who's covered she's not resembled with shaitan because what she has done is qata'at ala shaitan she has cut the path of shaitan so he won't misguide the people how has she done that in two ways First of all, she has protected herself. As we said before, that she came with the first wisdom, which is to protect herself. And the second one is she has helped the men in uh not falling into sins and not doing that which Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala is against. Shaitan what he does is the minute he realizes that the woman leaves the house and she walks away from the house every effort that he has now that he's brought her out of the house and she's out in the open shaitan will place every effort that he has to use that's why the prophet said al mar'atu awra the woman is awra fa idha kharajat istashrafaha shaitan and when she leaves shaitan tempts her he tempts her 
What does he do? رفع البصر إليها لما نقل لكها ليغويها أو يغوى بها فيوقع أحدها أو كلاهما في الفتنة. Either she's going to look around or the man is going to look at her. The minute she walks out of the house, the woman is now open for all forms of trials and tribulation. And shaitan will use her as an instrument to misguide those who are around, around her. So this is the wisdom behind the hijab. It is to what? It is to cut that path of shaitan in, um, in misguiding them. And of course, in protecting her as well. Al Imam Al Qahtani said in his Nuniya, Al Imam Al Qahtani, he said in his Nuniya, In Rijal al Nadirina ila Nisa, the men that are looking at women, Mithlus Sibai, they are like lions or wolves. Wolves would be a better word. Uh, because a lion has a good characteristics. They are like hyenas and wolves. مثل السباع تطوف باللحمان Walking around and uh, meat. Imagine a wolf walks around meat. إن الرجال الناظرين إلى النساء The men that are looking at women. مثل السباع They are like what? They are like the hyena and the wolf. تطوف باللحمان They are walking around meat. إن لم تسن تلك اللحوم أسودها أكلت بلا عوض ولا أثمان If that meat is not protected from them and it is not taken away from them and it is not made sure that they don't see it then أكلت it is eaten بلا عوض ولا أثمان without any money being given to you Hayyina ain't gonna give you money and there's not going to be another meat he's gonna bring you and that's the woman. The man will commit zina with her. He will take her virginity away. Whereas if she married a man, he would have paid dowry. He would have paid money. Now she's been taken with none of that. And if you today ponder, you see um, women who men would commit zina with. The wife that she's married to is far more beautiful than the woman he's committing zina with. His wife that he's married to is more attractive. She's more clean. She's greater, of course, than the woman he's committing zina with. Why? This shows you that shaitan's reality is that he wants to, to tempt this woman to the people. So you won't realize, what did you commit zina for? What made you commit zina? Why did you do it? And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He told us that the woman Every time she protects herself From the looking of men This is a purity for her heart Allahu Akbar Her heart becomes clean And the heart of the men around her Will become clean Allah said in the ayah وَإِذَا سَأَلْتُمُوهُنَّ مَتَاعًا فَاسْأَلُوهُنَّ مِنْ وَرَاءِ حِجَابٍ ذَلِكُمْ أَطْحَرُ لِقُلُوبِكُمْ وَقُلُوبِهِنَّ That when you ask or when you speak to the women, talk to them behind a veil, a meaning behind a hijab, she's covered. Talk to a woman while she is covered with a hijab. ذَلِكُمْ that meaning her covering up wearing hijab. ذَلِكُمْ that أَطْحَرُ لِقُلُوبِكُمْ is more purifying for your hearts. وَقُلُوبِهِنَّ And it is more purifying for their hearts, which is the men. If you look at the ayah, it is talking to the Prophet's wives. And we all know the Prophet's wives' heart are what? What? They are clean. This ayah has debunked and it has refuted those who don't wear hijab and say, my heart is good. What makes her heart good is wearing the hijab. And the fact that you're not wearing the hijab is an indication that your heart is not, is not pure. Now, speak, say to that sister, if it really, she's like, what matters is my heart. You're lying. You know how you're lying? Why do you spend one hour looking in the mirror and making sure you look good? 
if what's in your heart matters? Why do you have to beautify yourself that much if what matters is your heart? You would have left by just putting Vaseline on your face and not slapping this makeup on. Sahih? Yeah? Why is it that you want to put this much effort in? You yourself know that it matters how you look out externally. You yourself know how you look externally. When he came to the issue of hijab, Wallahi, I have never found a statement greater than the statement of Ibn Qayyim. He said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Allah brought you out of your mother's womb with his permission. Don't leave your houses without his permission. Allah brought you out of your, the womb of your mothers with his own permission, in the way he wanted to. Don't leave your households except in the permission and in the way he legislated, subhanahu wa ta'ala. That statement alone is sufficient to tell you what? The reality of what the hijab is. Shaykh al-Albani, rahimahullah, he said in his kitab, Jilbab al-Mar'at al-Muslima, Shaykh al-Albani said, هذا and this. وقد أبان الله تعالى الباري سيد رحمه الله تعالى الله has made it clear عن حكمة الأمر بإذناء الجلباب الله told us the wisdom behind why he told women to place the hijab over themselves sisters pay attention to this brothers and brothers why ذلك أدنى أن يعرفنا فلا يؤذين the jilbab and the hijab is what? ذَلِكَ أَدْنَى أَنْ يُعْرَفْنَا فَلَا يُؤْذَيْنَ What does it mean? ذَلِكَ أَدْنَى أَنْ يُعْرَفْنَا The jilbab is a way for her to be known. To be known what? That she is a afifa. She is a chaste woman. ذَلِكَ أَدْنَى أَنْ يُعْرَفْنَا That the woman is known that this woman is a what? Afifa. This girl is Afif. Afif means what? She is chaste. By her wearing hijab, this is how she is known she is a chaste woman. Are you there? And that's why men will leave her alone. Men will leave her alone. You go to Egypt today. Egypt is one of the countries where there's Cry, there's trials and tribulations just like there are in many places in the Muslim world one of the problems is women getting harassed it's one of the problems they, sell, they face but I remember one time there were a group of sisters who live in Egypt who left this country who are there and they go to they go to classes to study so they take, they, so they take public transport so I asked them, do you find it very easy, the fact that you take trans public transport? They said, yes, we do. We cover fully, and that when we come in, they refer to us as Sayyidah. Sayyidah. That's what the Egyptians, they're very good with their mubalagha. And they get up for her, and they let her sit down. The minute that they find that the woman is not dressed properly, they go towards her. Now, can there be a sister who's wearing a hijab that's not chast and a woman that's not wearing a hijab that's chast? Can there be? Can there? There's a sister who's wearing a big hijab, but she's not afif. And another one who she's wearing bad clothes, but she's afif. She's chast. Can it happen? Yeah? Can it? Yeah? Of course it can happen. Of course it can happen. But how would the mujrim, the criminal, this wrongdoer, how would he know? Sah? Are you there? How would he know? How would he know that you're just? What well, you would be recognized that you're the just one. This one who's wearing the hijab, who's not just, she won't be touched. Ah, oh, she'll be left alone. Because she's wearing something that tells the people leave me alone. Don't get in my way. Are you there? 
and you rafna the woman will automatically be known she's chaste. Haram. Fala yu'dayn and then she is not harmed. Sheikh Nasir said, يعني أن المرأة إذا 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 احتفت بالجلباب عرفت بأنها من العفاء في المحصنات الطيبات فلا فلا يدينهن الفصاق بما لا يليق من الكلام. No man is going to whistle for her. No man is going to call her. No man is going to touch, try to touch her. None of that. None of that. Many Muslim women, many Muslim women, they suffer from public transport. by men trying to touch her. So, isn't that the case? Isn't that the reality? Men trying to touch her. You do. Back when I used to take the train, and I used to take the buses, I would see a man so close to a woman. I'm like, there's so much space. Why are you stuck to this woman in the train? In my heart, I'm like, there's so much space. Why are you so close to her? Are you there? She feels uncomfortable, okay? When she sits down, her clothes are so tight, she has to cross her legs, and she's, she's worried that the, in the train, the one in front of her, he might see her. And why are you putting yourself through this punishment? Why are you punishing yourself like this? Wear something which is for fun, something which is very big, that you can just relax when you sit down, your body shape, or nothing will be seen. Sorry. You're struggling, you're walking like this. Even when you're walking, You see a woman wearing, what is it called, stilettos? Was it? Huh? Those long high heels. Yeah, she can't walk. She can't even walk. She's struggling. She's tiptoeing. She has to go all by a machine so she could walk. Massage her legs. Inna lillahi. All of the adab she's going through, she's punishing herself in this dunya before the, before the hereafter. So the fusaq are going to come her direction, without a doubt. Okay? Without a doubt, she is. بخلاف ما لو خرجت متبدلة غير مستترة فإنها هذا مما يطلع الفساق فيها التحرش بها كما هو مشاهد في كل عصر ومصر. Every time, every place you find, Sheikh Nasser said, that the woman who's not covered, she attracts. This is the question you have to ask yourself. Be honest with yourself, sisters. The woman who's not covered, who's dressed in that way, didn't she do that to get attention? Yeah? If she got more than the attention he was waiting for, who did she blame? So, are you there? She only left your house to get attention, to be looked at, to be given attention. So, you're only seeking attention. That's the truth. Uh, or else, keep yourself covered. Hide yourself. Are you with me? One time I remember there was a sister I told from a family member. I told her, cover up. She said, it's what's important is your heart. And I said to her, what's the most important thing from the heart? So she didn't know and then I said, sincerity. She said, I agree with you. Sincerity is more important. You should spend more time talking about sincerity. I said, okay, what's the, be- what's the reality of sincerity? I, she said to me that no one knows what you're intending. In other words, the reality of sincerity is that you hide yourself. You hide your deeds and your nobility from the people. What is the hijab? The hijab is also to hide yourself. The hijab is also what? It's to hide yourself. So if you're sincere, then why don't you cover yourself to yourself? Why do you have to show others? Why do you have to show yourself to others? So this is the reality. All of this is wahyu shaytan. All of this is what? Is wahyu shaytan. It's a revelation from who? Shaytan has revelation he sends to. Whenever you respond to some people's doubts, they go back. Shaytan says, okay, you couldn't answer that one. Okay, maybe he knows an answer for that. Give him this answer. So he keeps sending revelation on those, on those people. اللباس والنعمة. The other point that we're going to go into is clothes are a blessing from Allah. Brothers and sisters, clothing is a blessing. Something Allah blessed us with, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah created Nabi Allah Adam in what? 
في أحسن في أحسن تقويم الله created آدم in the best of forms and الله adorned him he beautified آدم by placing clothing over him when the person takes off their clothes they lose their beauty clothing makes you beautiful صح you ate too much you got stretch marks you have a big stomach you have uh, you your your stomach has lines and what not yeah you got rolls because you're fat um your 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 arms are what do you call it small or skinny whatever or your hairy like Asians all of that what does the clothing do for you it comes out you're walking outside and people are like Allahu Akbar do you work out if only that clothes was taken off you subhanallah and you get happy and you say Allahu Akbar yeah put your effort in so you have to say that what's making you look like that I've seen in one day I wore two different thobes and somebody said to me subhanallah you lost weight in the same day and then within that same day they're like mashallah you, you look mashallah you look sharp Allah Akbar you look what did that have you guys seen that yeah clothing can make you look skinny like what can it make you also look in shape healthy can it not they can it's a blessing it beautifies you This is where zina comes from. It is a beauty. Clothing is beauty. If the person wears it, they're beautified with it. Adam and Hawa, when they wore those clothes, Allah covered them, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there was nobody else, but Allah covered them. What did they do? They ate from a tree they were told not to eat from. Allah prohibited them from it. What happened to them? As a form of punishment, They lost their clothing. Are you with me? Isn't that what Shaitan wanted? Are you with me, brothers and sisters? Yeah? Pay attention. Brothers and sisters, please pay attention to this point. When Adam was created, what was Iblis told to do? To what? To prostrate, prostrate to who? Were we honored by being commanded the angels and the Iblis to prostrate to our Father? We, were we not honored? Were we not honored as the children of Adam? We were not honored? We were honored. Adam was told, sorry, Iblis was told, you're going to have to put your head down and prostrate to the creation of Adam. This is an honor. Iblis would love to see the children of Adam humiliated. He would love it. When he sees in central London, Iblis, a human drunk sleeping inside his puke, he laughs. This is the kind of thing he enjoys. Look at that. Look at that. When he sees a woman uncovered, her hijab, she took it off. And this is the way he took to make Adam and Hawa lose their clothing and he's convinced a woman that this is the beauty this is the style he convinced her he knows he's humiliated her he humiliated her I ask you guys a sincere question if somebody ripped your clothes fully off you in public what do they do to you? I ask you a sincere question somebody strips your clothes off you in public and tells you walk around What have they done to you? Yeah? They've what? They've humiliated you. Humiliation. Iblis, by taking the hijab off the woman and telling her to walk on the streets, Wallah, he's no different. Don't. It's how simple it is. These women are being humiliated. And what is so sad that hurts, that burns inside is that if that person whose clothes is stripped from them 
and they are told to walk naked, bare naked, in front of uh, the mass. They still believe. Now I have been humiliated. Look at me, styling it out. You're like, you've just got humiliated, and you don't even understand. You got humiliated. Are you with me? He thinks it's style to walk in front of the people like that. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? Am I making sense of what I'm saying? So that's what he wants, Iblis. Is he succeeding in that? This now you have to understand. The issue of taking off your hijab is something that shaitan has done to the kuffar, even within the kuffar. Some of them don't even believe this is right. They're against it. They are what? What's this happening? What is this that's happening? Go to Stamford Hill, North London. I used to live there, that area. Exactly, I used to live there. In 1997, I lived there. Look at the Jews and their women. Wallahi, billahi, tallahi, I saw a Jewish woman in Stamford Hill. I saw not once, not twice. Not thrice, I saw a woman, Jew woman, wearing a jilbab and a niqab. Niqab. How do I know she's a Jew woman? The man that's with her is a Jew. He's holding her hand. He's got the long thing. He's got that black hat. Covered. Have you seen that their men, their garment is above their ankles? Have you seen it? That's the Jews. Go Stamford Hill. Stamford Hill. That's their hub. They've got schools there, they've got everything there. You just walk through that place and look at these people, the way they live. Are you with me? They're a very close community, very together. They've got everything in there. Their women are covered. So it's not something that only Muslims see as a problem. Are you there? Their women have also seen that. They're covered. Hatta, I was in Stamford Hill one time and I was buying something from a shop. And then the man behind the till who was selling this product, when the woman was talking to him, or when the woman was talking to the man, she didn't even stand face to face with him. She actually stood on the side sidewards and she gave the money from the side take the money he took the money all she said to him was this much that she took her money she left she walked away are you with me the thing concerning women is a western thing they spread it they are the ones who spread it you won't find this in the jews and you won't find them in the real christians you won't find that in them they stick to covering up. Allah says in the ayah, When they both tasted the tree, their aura started to show. And Adam and Hawa started to take the leaves from the trees in the in the in the in Jannah. Allah called out to them. What did he say to them? Alam and Hakuma. Did I not prohibit from both of you until kuma shajara that tree? Wa akulakum and did I not say to you in the in the shaytana lakum aduukum in the shaytana that shaytan lakumahi is for both of you aduu mubin? That is a clear cut evidence. Did I not tell you that? Clothing going and shaytan is your clear cut evidence. Are you with me? This is what it is. Muhammad al-Amin al-Shamqiyatiyu He has a kitab called Al-Rihlatu ila Ifriqiyya Muhammad al-Amin al-Shamqiyatiyu He wrote a book which he called it My Journey to Africa Muhammad al-Amin al-Shamqiyatiyu is from Mauritania, right? Where is he from? He's from Mauritania, صح? Which is from, which is where? Where is it in? It's in Africa. 
Uh, so he went to Africa, he went to Sudan and everything. So he talks about his journey. Wallahi, brothers, so much benefit in it. The things that he mentioned. Al Alama, Muhammad bin Shaqiti. In there, there is a fatwa where the Sheikh talks about the prohibition in studying in places where there's Freemason. And the men and the women are sitting next to each other, the men and the women are sitting together. He says in there, وَمَعْلُومٌ What is known is أَنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ لِشِدَّةِ عَدَاوَتِهِ The great enmity that shaitan has for us. لِآدَمَ to نَبِي اللَّهِ آدَمُ وَذُرِّيَّتَهُ And the lineage of Adam, the children that came from Adam, is أَنَّهُ يَسْعَى That he will strive بِكُلِّ مَا لَدَيْهِ With everything that has been given to him مِنَ الْوَسَائِلِ Every means that has been given to him فِي إِهَانَتِهِمْ To humiliate them. Allahu Akbar. Every effort that he has, he will take to humiliate the children of Adam. He will use all of the different types of humiliation there is. Worldly humiliation and in the hereafter as well. And what is known is one of the greatest forms of uh, humiliation in terms of etiquette is كشف عورتش الإنسان when you strip a person naked ونزل ثيابه and you take his clothing away from him التي تستر عنه which he dresses himself with are you with me? you know when, you, when men go to prison men go to prison how are they showered? they're told to shower in a place where it's open it's a form of what? To institutionalization, this person is to take over their mind, and it is a form of humiliation. They take a spray, they place you here, and they spray the living daylight out of you. Spray, that's it. You're naked. All of the other men can see you. You can see them, meaning there is nothing left for you. Nothing. If you leave prison, every single body knows how you look. Everyone knows how they look. There's nothing private for you anymore. Are you with me? There's nothing private. So it's a form of humiliation. A person leaves prison as a monster. And prison is what makes people worse than what they were on the streets. Yes. Yes. And you have to realize these polices, if everybody becomes good, then they ain't going to have a job, are they? They have a job. This is to create a job. Are you there? So creating a job. Things have to be made. Problems have to be caused for their existence to be are you? to be there. So that's what they do. They know that 90% of people who come out of prison end up going into prison. Did you guys know that every three people in Feltham uh, prison, did you know every three people, one person is a Muslim? Did you know that? Every what, three, one person is a Muslim. Did you know 600 after tooth? Do you know which community is the most in Feltham prison? Who is the biggest community in prison? Yeah? Somalis. Somalis are the largest in Feltham prison. 600 out of 2,000 people of them are Somalis. Or Somali in prison. I'm sure they memorize just Amma Tabarak. It's the honest truth. They're in prison. When they come out, do they come out normal? Do they come out fine? No. They don't. 